Okay, this magic stuff's gotta stop at some point. Ooh. I do like free art supplies, especially an ink, and a Windsor & Newton ink at that. All right, I'll review it. Today we are completing a look at our Windsor & Newton ink collection, that is until I buy more, with the Windsor & Newton Non-Waterproof Liquid Indian Ink or Tinta China Liquida. That's actually what it says on the packaging, not even joking. Now what really caught my attention about this is that unlike their normal ink, this one is actually more liquidy it seems, and on top of that it's non-waterproof, as this ink right here, their normal Indian ink, is actually waterproof, so I'm very curious as to why that is. The packaging features a beautiful illustration of a dragon. I can absolutely love it. And you can see that on two sides of the box they connect, and on the other side, the other two connect. Very nice. When opening the box, we actually get something very different from Windsor & Newton. The inkwell does not match the box art. Normally, the illustration would simply change coloring or be shrunken down or more simple, but here, they've completely ditched it. There's no illustration at all, which is very interesting. So I'm very surprised by that. Now, this ink sells for about $4.99 to $5.99, depending on where you go. That may seem like a lot for the little bit you get. However, I have have to say that so far almost every ink we've tested for them with the exclusion of the white ink have been of an insane amazing quality that is absolutely a joy to use. This is actually my favorite ink to use that's non acrylic. I absolutely love it. Also want to comment real quick that as always it's a standard Windsor Newton inkwell. Square design, thick glass, plastic cap. Though again I am sad that there is no illustration it's just some boring text. That's uh it's kind of boring. And as always we're going to be testing this ink in our Batman sketchbook. So this ink is super liquidy, and at first I was actually having some trouble getting the lines to work. You can see it bubbled up here, but when you get the flow, it's a very smooth ink. Again, it's that Winsor & Newton standard that I really, really like. Very smooth, very nice controlled ink. That was all done with one dip. Very nice. I'll probably get a few more if I shake it up. No, not really. Way more liquidy than I thought. Far more than the normal Indian ink. So I'm very curious why that's the case. Also very curious to see how non-waterproof this is, because the other one was fairly waterproof. I'm going to use my quill pen to see how the lines look with that. Unlike with the color pigment, you get straight, solid black lines. Love that. I love that consistency. It's awesome. Very nice. Got a bubble. So I'm noticing because I got two bubbles, I think because it's so liquidy, it actually kind of weirdly enough bubbles up around these areas of tension on the nib. So that could be a problem because you get, well, bubbles and huge ink marks. So I have got to keep that in mind when I'm inking, but getting some great, great lines with my quill pen. I want to also do a quick little test with my brush because I'm curious to see how actual liquidy it is. Oh, wow. That's very liquidy. That is very liquidy. Love how that's basically just pitch black. Love the consistency. Very similar results to what we actually got with their normal one. It's just way more liquidy. So I'm thinking that maybe this version of the ink is more for, hey, doing like a black background, maybe doing like cool ink washes as you water it down. This ink may even be better for fountain pens instead of dip pens. Because while I am noticing that we're getting more areas of tension, like we're getting these bubbles, maybe for a fountain pen, because it's thinner, it's more liquidy, it has just more of a flow to it. So it would work better in that instance test how non-waterproof it is because it does say that this is a non-waterproof ink so i'm very curious to see how that's gonna go and let oh yeah that is not waterproof at all that's kind of cool though the actual line artwork isn't that bad okay if we put your water directly on the lines it is bleeding and fading off a little bit i like that though we could get some cool effects with that i actually really want to quickly compare this to the normal winter newton ink to see the extreme difference between the two so way back here here's our original test with the winter newton ink and i'm going to show you how waterproof this is so we wet our brush as you can see when we move it it's not bleeding at all. We are rehydrating the ink. There is no bleeding. There is no streaking. There is nothing. If I keep going, we may get a little bit. Let's see. Okay, I see a little bit, but nothing too extreme. In fact, that may just be the paper getting darker from the water, but you can see there is basically nothing happening here at all. Compare and contrast that with how this ink is operating. You can see that this part here has had plenty of time to dry and just going over it, it's already bleeding. Just a little bit of water, just the smallest bit. I think this could definitely be a problem when you 
you're creating some artwork because since it's not waterproof, you do some ink washes, you mix your ratio wrong, you could really damage your artwork. However, I also think that you could do some really cool stuff with this. I think we could create some really cool effects. I don't want to say it's like a watercoloring because it's definitely not, but you may think in the same way that you would think using watercolor inks because it's not waterproof, it's going to spread out. I'm really excited because today's illustration I had the idea for for quite a bit and I finally get to do it. It's of a knight with half shattered armor standing his ground with a big sword as he lets his inner demon out represented by a T-Rex. I did this illustration with this ink in mind and with our test it's going to be awesome. So roll that super time lapse. And we're done, guys. I love how this piece came out. Easily in my top 10 favorite pieces. And like always, this will be available on my ArtStation account for a $1 digital download. Now, after using this ink for a prolonged period of time, I have to say that there are definitely some major weaknesses, but definitely some major areas of strength with this ink. I want to talk about the weaknesses first. With the ruler, it bled a lot. In fact, I actually had to add blood to the sword, that's what all this red stuff is, to make up for this obvious spillage. On top of that, when I was doing my cross hatching, I noticed that I was actually scraping away some of the previous layers of ink, which is not good. You don't want that. And there was also some definite major inconsistency with my line work. Sometimes my lines were long and strong. Other times they were short and weak. Sometimes they were long and then they would actually die off and start out black and become gray. Other times they were short, but still consistent. Now those problems I think contribute to this ink's main flaw and that's it actually gunks up dip pens. Now this is my normal dip pen stats on screen. It's a pretty simple speedball nip. I use this for almost all my dip pen illustrations. With this ink, it gunks gunked this thing up like no tomorrow. In fact, even after cleaning it with water and soap and then drying it thoroughly, it was still stained black in some areas. That's not good. On top of that, the nib became so compromised, a part of the tip actually broke off, which has never happened to me. And I had to switch nibs, I believe twice during this entire illustration, which I've never had to do before. I know nibs don't last forever, but they shouldn't be compromised to that much of an extent. And that's my main complaint with the ink is that it compromises nibs way too much. And yeah, there are some splots watches visible on camera. More in person, but I can live with it. The poster that I made actually was able to hide all of it, so that's good. It looks great on camera. That's what's important to me. But those are some major heavy faults, and they're hard to look past, but this ink does something so exceptionally well, it kind of makes me look past it a little bit. This smoke battle effect is amazing. It, it is the best one I've done so far, and to recreate this in a normal ink wash would be a pain in the butt, and it takes some real talent to make something that looks this organic through that old method. With all that said, you guys know I'm not going to say it's better than the Windsor & Newton Black Indian Ink. And it's nowhere near as good as the FW Acrylic Ink. However, with that said, I have to say that while the Windsor Newton Black Indian Ink and the Acrylic FW Ink are still my favorite inks and they're my go-to inks, I actually think this ink works really well as a complementary ink. Simply do your line work and illustration using your ink of choice and then use this for the background. Use it to create that awesome battlefield effect. Use it to do awesome ink washes. That's where this ink shines and you can go ham on it as much as you want because these inks are waterproof. They're not going to deteriorate and you're not going to ruin your artwork by doing this method. And mixing inks is how you can actually improve your artwork as you're drawing from the best of multiple sources. And this will be the technique I'm going to use moving forward when I allow myself to make pieces using mixed inks. Remember, a lot of the artwork I make are for reviews where I limit myself to only one artistic tool or one artistic medium. So just keep that in mind. That's why this ink on my scale of 1 to 10 gets a 7. It's above average. It has faults, but what it does well, it does exceptionally well. And with the mindset that I was telling you guys, have this be a complementary and backup ink, literally 
actually in the background, it can work really well, and that's why I think it earns that 7 rating. Definitely not Winsor Newton's best ink in my opinion, but far from their worst. It has faults, but I think it's a great ink to add to your toolbox in the way that I suggest. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you guys agree with my opinion? Do you guys think that this is a good backup ink and a complimentary ink, or do you guys think that this is a better main ink than the normal inks that I use? And while you're down there letting me know what your guys' opinions are, go ahead and leave a like in the video, subscribe to your channel for more art and animation based content, and remember, I'm JY Balfour Productions, I draw and ink with power and my own soul.